Hey, Mom, Samantha invited me over to her house. Can I go? Goodness no, child. That girl lives all the way out of California. You would have to take a ship all the way down across South America to get to see her. And we wouldn't see our baby for over a year. Ugh, mother, you are so 18th century. There is a new technology called the railroad. I can be there in like seven days. Seven days? Well, how about that? You know, before we know it, they're going to be inventing these flying machines. So, can I go? All right. Yes, thank you. Let me tell Samantha. S E E Y O U Let's resurrect Abraham Lincoln so we can talk about him one more time as we discuss the Homestead Act. In 1862, right in the middle of the Civil War, Lincoln signed this act to promote Americans to move west by granting them 160 acres of land. The land was free and theirs if they farmed the land for five years. It allowed former slaves, women, and immigrants to be landowners. But of course, Let's not ever forget, American Indians were already living there. So, wow, maybe Lincoln wasn't such a saint after all. Lincoln also sponsored the Pacific Railroad Act that allowed the West to grow in the first place. In the 1850s, the fastest way to travel over land was by train. But at the time, railroad lines didn't extend all the way across the United States. Pioneers trying to reach the West had to make the trip by wagon, and that could take over six months, and not everybody who started that journey would be alive at the end, as anyone who played the game Oregon Trail would tell you. To unite the country by rail, Abraham Lincoln granted two companies the opportunity of a lifetime to build the first transcontinental railroad. The Union Pacific Railroad would start from Nebraska and the Central Pacific from California, the two lines would eventually meet in the middle. The companies were promised huge plots of land and thousands of dollars for each mile of track they laid. The race was on to make a fortune. Starting in Sacramento, California, the Central Pacific Railroad faced an enormous hurdle. Its track had to pass through the towering Sierra Nevada mountain range. The mountains posed a great challenge for engineers, but it wasn't the engineers building the railroad. Laborers from Ireland and China did all the hard work for very low pay. They faced harsh conditions, blasting through mountains and tunneling through rocky terrain. Many lost their lives handling the explosives that would blast through the mountains. In the east, the Union Pacific Railroad workers were rushing ahead on the flat plains, but their path was intruding on other people's land. The Great Plains were home to the Cheyenne, the Sioux, Arapaho, and many other American Indian tribes. The United States government forced American Indians off their land, again. And the buffalo the Native Americans depended on for food, clothing, and shelter were being hunted. It became sport to kill as many buffalo in destroying the Indians' way of life. There were about 30 million buffalo in the U.S. in 1800, but by 1886, they had difficulty finding 25 good specimen. The buffalo was extremely close to extinction. For Native Americans, the railroad didn't represent progress. The iron horse meant the destruction of their way of life. Many Indians will try to halt the railroad construction, but their resistance couldn't stop America's westward expansion. The meeting point for the two railroads was set at Promontory Summit, Utah. As the railroad drew closer, laborers were pushed to work faster because even more money was now being awarded for each mile of completed track. Setting a historic record, Chinese workers laid 10 miles of track in a single day. It was their speed that propelled the Central Pacific to reach the finish line first. On May 10th, 1869, the final golden spike was hammered into the track, 
completing the world's first transcontinental railroad. A journey across the country that had taken six months by wagon can now be made in seven days. And along the route, thousands of acres of land was open for settlement. And they will forever change the American West. I've been working on the railroad all the live long day. I've been working on the railroad just to pass the time away. Can't you hear the whistle blowing? Rise up so early in the morning. Can't you hear the captain shouting? Dinah, blow your horn. Dinah, won't you blow? Dinah, won't you blow? Dinah, won't you blow your horn? Dinah, won't you blow? Dinah, won't you blow? Dinah, won't you blow your horn?